Hey guys, how y'all doing today? Well, I'm doing okay, thanks for asking. Um, went out, got a new uh, air compressor today. And uh, I'm going to show it to you. I've got to do the break in, i got to add oil to it. But for starters, we're just going to have a look at it and I'll point out a couple things. And then I'll do what I gotta do, and then we'll come back and have a look. Anyway, here we go. Here's what it is Campbell Hossfield twin cylinder lubricated 20 gallon tank tractor supply. Carries these, puts out 6.5 CFM at 40 and 5.7 at 90 which should be enough to run my paint gun as well as any other little power tools I may want to run with it um, for starters I've got to put oil in it and it comes with a little plug in it right there that I've got to take out I guess they assembled any assembly that was required. I guess they did it there at Tractor Supply when they got them in. I didn't have to do anything to it. This is the way I brought it home. Anyway, it comes with this uh, extension set up for the vo uh, oil drain, which is right here, which will make it nice when you drain it. It won't be running down the side of the tank. And you take the filler plug out and put this in there, which is, I'd say that's a one-way check ball. You can almost see in there what that is, but you can't really. But it's, I'm imagining that's a one-way check ball. Anyway, that goes in the breather hole where the oil goes. So I'm going to set that stuff up. It takes 8.5 ounces of compressor oil. And this is a 16 ounce bottle of Campbell Hosfield air compressor oil. So that's what we're going to put in there. And then it, you got to let it run for half an hour break in time. And then we're going to drain that back out and look at it, see if we get any chunks of metal or whatnot. So I'm going to do that stuff to it. And then uh, I'll get back to you. Alright? Okay, that breather is just as I thought. It's got a check ball in it. It will let crankcase gases or whatnot escape, but it won't let anything suck in. It also has a sight glass for the oil right here. And that's just a little less than recommended full, but for breaking that's going to be fine. It's really funny, it calls for 8.5 ounces of oil. And they know you've got to break it in and drain it right out and then fill it back up. And they sell the oil in 16 ounce bottles, so you don't have enough. You almost have to buy two of them. So by not topping that off completely, I should have enough left over to fill that all the way when we're done. So anyway, next step is to uh, open the drain cock on the bottom. Which I've already done that to make sure there's nothing in there. And plug it in and let it run for half an hour. So I'm going to do that. It's hissing so loud because I got the drain valve open to let the air escape while I was doing its initial break in. All right, so I drained the oil out of it after its initial 30 minute break period, break-in period. I've got a magnet 
one of those telescopic magnets on a stick. I've tried to get every little bit of filings and whatnot off of there I could. But we're just gonna fish around in here a little bit and see if we find anything. When it was draining out, it looked good. I didn't see anything. I think you can see it's a little bit dark. But that's probably not unusual for a 30 minute run in a brand new machine. Anyway, I'm going to put some new oil back in it and uh, shut the drain and the regulator so it'll actually build up power and make sure it shuts off as it's supposed to. But yeah, I'm very pleased with that. I see a little bit of gunk on there, but that's why you do a break-in. Anyway, there's no big chunks of anything, so yay. I've got a 25-foot length of hose I got from Harbor Freight some time ago and never have used yet. So I've got it plumbed up with quick connects on both ends. The female and the male is over there. And I've got a female for the compressor itself. That was actually a good deal. They had these in a box at Tractor Supply. And they were, you know, they sell them in kits with these and four males for like nine bucks. These were like three bucks and the males were like $1.69. So I got a handful of those. That way I'll always have the same size and they'll fit right. Because they are not all created equal. Alright. Alright. Let's have a look at this air filter while we're investigating and looking at things. Oh, nice paper. Okay. Pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. All right, I'm happy with that. Seems relatively quiet. The regulator turned off, so it's just building up pressure. It's almost at 50 in about a minute. About 130 psi max. All right, 135 in five minutes. Cool. Okay, I've hooked up a blowgun to it and opened the regulator. I hear a small leak somewhere. I'm going to have to chase that down with a bottle of water here in a little bit. But we're going to do a blow-off test now and see where it kicks back on at. I took the handle out and I wrapped it with some black tape, electrical tape, just to give it a little bit of cush. Maybe it'll soften up some of that vibration. Is what I'm hoping. Oh, it's not gonna turn back on because it's got enough pressure on it.
Pop out valve. Oh yeah, I don't hear that handle rattling now at all. Good deal. All right, I gotta track down that leak, but other than that, I think we're in good shape. Okay, I went in the house and got a little bit of dish soap and a little bit of water and a little bitty paintbrush from my art supplies and came out here and just started dabbing it around all the plumbing fittings and this is what I found. You see that? See those bubbles? And you may be able to hear it too, I don't know. Anyway, that's where my leak is. Let me check the rest of them while I'm at it. The soap will make it bubble. The water will just make it hiss. You guys probably knew that though, didn't you? Yeah, I'd say that's the only place. So, anyway. I'm going to turn it off, drain the air out of it, and take that apart. Make sure they put Teflon tape on that before they assembled it. And then put it back together, and it should be good to go. Every Campbell Hostel uh, air compressor I've ever had leaked. So every time I went to use them, I have to let them pump up first. I do not want to go through that with this one. If it has air in it, and I know I'm coming right back, in an hour or two or whatever. I want there to be pressure in there. So I'm going to fix that and then uh, should be all set. I don't know if you can see those bubbles right in there. That's because that soap and water are still there and it's leaking right there. Yeah, I think you can see them pretty good. That's why you want soap. Just water wouldn't bubble up like that. Oh yeah. Be sure to drain all the air out of it before you start unscrewing anything. If there's even a little bit of pressure in there, when you get to the end of your threads, it's going to blow it out on you. may ruin your threads, may hurt you. Yep. Where you at? Just as I thought. No tape. Dumbasses. I mean jerks. <laughs> what are they thinking? You know? Mofos. Anyway, I'll put some Teflon tape, put it back together, be all set. Alright. We are completely pumped up at a hundred and... Yeah, it looks like 130 pounds. Um, not a sound. Just that one joint was, they didn't put tape on it. Freaking A. Alright, so, that's my new compressor. Uh, it may not be the right way to break one in and set it up, but I would do no less than that. And, uh, thanks for watching. See ya.